All right, so now we're going to start talking a little bit more about uh, some of the bony structure, uh, a little bit more specifically getting into kind of the actual structure of long and short bones, and then a little bit more into microscopic structure. So looking at a long bone here, you can see that it has a number of parts to it. Uh, some of these a little bit uh, more scientific in wording here, but you have the long central part here that's narrower. That is the shaft of the bone, also known as the diaphysis, and I do want you to know those terms, both terms, uh, has the compact bone around the outside with a marrow cavity in the interior. Like I said, in adults, this would be filled with yellow marrow, which is fat uh, or adipose tissue. The expanded ends are referred to as the epiphyses, or epiphysis would be singular. The proximal epiphysis would be closer to the main trunk of the body. The distal epiphysis would be further away. And what we'll see is both of those are going to be covered with Articular cartilage, which the type you should know from other chapters now, is a hyaline cartilage. And again, helps reduce friction when those bone ends are moving past one another. Uh, if we're looking at this, the entire surface of the bone, uh, with the exception of the joint surfaces, is covered by a membrane of a dense regular connective tissue called the periosteum, much like the uh, perichondrium on cartilage. This is that dense regular connective tissue. Uh, helps anchor blood vessels to the surface area. Gives a good attachment site for ligaments and tendons. And it's going to house some of those different cells that we talked about underneath it. Uh, again, really good blood supply and nerve supply to the bone. Uh, there is little openings in the bone called uh, nutrient foramen. Uh, foramen is an opening that has something passing through it in a bone. Uh, so and we'll talk about a number of those when we actually talk about bone structures and the stuff needed for that. Uh, again, periosteum, very tightly connected by collagen fibers called per perforating fibers that attach that periosteum to the actual bone. And you can kind of see this right here. You can see the compact bone, uh, that periosteum and those perforating fibers holding it all in place. On the internal surface, you have a delicate um, Connective tissue uh, referred to as the endosteum, probably mostly areolar in nature. Uh, I'm going to cover all the trabeculae of the spongy bone. It has osteoblasts as well as osteoclasts housed along that inner side of that. And you can kind of see this on this one. Uh, short flat and regular bones are pretty similar structure they're going to have. I always kind of say they're a lot like a Nestle's Crunch. You have compact chocolate on the outside, compact chocolate on the bottom side, and you have crunch in between. Uh, when we're looking at these bones, you're going to have compact bone on the surface, compact bone on the surface, and spongy bone in the middle there. There is no diaphysis. There is no epiphysis. There is no marrow cavity other than where the spongy bone is that's going to contain that red bone marrow. So like it says, they're kind of like a sandwich, but to me, a lot like a Nestle's Crunch or a Crackle where you have compact, crunchy, kind of spongy bone middle, and then compact bone on the other side. And again, bone marrow, two main types. You have red bone marrow, which is going to be in the heads of long bones, as well as all those short, flat, and regular bones. In an adult, that is going to be that bone-forming tissue, that hematopoietic, hem hematopoietic or hemopoietic tissue. Uh, in the diaphysis of long bones in an adult, a lot of times they're going to be filled with uh, adipose tissue, which was referred to as yellow marrow. And again, this mainly changes as you get older and younger children. All, have, all the cavities are filled with bone tissue, but as the bones get longer relative to the body, uh, you don't need as much bone forming tissue, so a lot of those become yellow marrow. And for some reason, become severely anemic. The body can co opt that space back, fill it back up with red marrow, and increase the blood forming capacity of the body. Uh, again, usually in adults, it's going to be those short, fat, and regular bones of the axial skeleton, uh, as well as kind of the heads of some of these other long bones is where you'll find that red marrow. Uh, when we actually go and look at this, so this is kind of like taking a look at my arm, and if I was to slice it like this right through here, you're looking at a transverse section on this one here. We can see compact bone has this nice repetitive structure. Uh, it has these nice circular concentric ring structures that are referred to as osteons or reversion systems. Uh, if you look at these ones, in reality, you're kind of looking at it on the end like this, but in reality, they're running up and down the bone like this, so it's kind of forming a column. Uh, and they're going the same direction as the bone, the weight support of that bone. 
Uh, again, you're going to have a number of different layers on this stuff here. These are rings of bone. You have, on any of these osseum systems, you have a central opening. And then you have these what are called concentric lamellae that are going to surround it. A lot like tree, tree rings. You have a center here, and then you have a ring, a ring, and a ring around that. Uh, what's interesting on these ones is the collagen fibers are kind of, they're not just wrapping like this. They spiral up and around. And what goes on this one will spiral clockwise and the other one will spiral counterclockwise. But if you were to look at them, they're actually perpendicular to one another. Uh, this is going to be one of those things, and I think I have a nice picture of it right here. You can see how each concentric lamellae, they're going in opposite directions, which means those fibers are kind of 90 degrees to one another. This means that that bone is going to resist twisting in either direction. Uh, and again, you have that tube going up the center. This is referred to as the Herversion Canal. When you actually look at bone under the microscope, a lot of times you won't see the arteries, capillaries, nerves, veins, things like that in there. Uh, bone is a tougher one to make a slide of in the fact that it is calcified. So the only way to really make a, a slide of calcified bone, you have to take that and you have to actually grind that bone thin enough that you can see, pass light through it. When you do that, it is going to pull out all those cells, all those arteries and veins and nerves and things like that. So you... You generally don't see those on these slides unless they're decalcified bones. Uh, but again, central canal and these concentric lamellae rounding around it and go again, fibers traveling in opposite directions. Uh, if you overall look at it here, you can see that really well. So central canal, concentric lamellae surrounding that. If we go down in here, there is also some of these canals that are connecting each of those aversion canals to one another. Those are referred to as Volkman canals. Again, all these things are nutrient type of foramens that are allowing blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatics to get to this bony tissue to keep these bone cells per the, getting the nutrients that they need. And again, you can see this really, again, this is a ground bone slide. You can see, you don't really see arteries, veins and stuff in here. You don't really see a cell here, but you can see these little black dots. Those are all osteocytes in these concentric lamellae. That would be that Herversion Canal. That is what we're going to have these repeating units. In between each of these ASEAN systems, you have a, kind of like these half moon shaped ones here. These are called interstitial lamellae because, again, you can't, when you start butting circles to one another, you're going to have spaces in between them. And these interstitial lamellae fill those in. All those little dots that are on the outside there, those are what are where an osseocyte would be. They're in a small cavity called a lacunae. And with these lacunae, and this was the same name we actually used for uh, same name we actually used for cartilage. Uh, what we're going to see in these ones is because there is no ability for anything to travel through that matrix. You have these small interconnecting, almost like canals. These are extensions of a cell. Little hair-like lines going through this bone. These are called canaliculi, and these canaliculi let nutrients travel from one osteocyte to the next and allow all those nutrients and waste products to travel back and forth to that aversion canal. Uh, you can kind of see it on one like this. You have all these little osteocytes here, and you can see if we were to fill all these circles in, you can see how each one of those aversion canal systems is going to have this network with a bunch of canaliculi in there that are going to allow these nutrients to travel out from here, waste products to travel back to those aversion canals so the bone can maintain its normal function. And you can see them pretty well in this picture right here. You can see all those little canaliculi traveling through here. There is a few other types of lamellae. If you go around the to the very outside of the compact bone, you're going to see one going around the very outside. This is called an external circumferential lamellae. It's kind of tying all the bone together on the outside. You also have a few layers of that on the inside of the bone as well. I think I have a picture that shows this as well, but these are kind of wrapping each other in those ASEAN systems and interstitial lamellae inside these two areas like this. Uh, like I said, interstitial lamellae, these are in between each of those ASEAN systems because circles, you can only get so close, but you're going to have areas in between those circles that don't mesh together. So you have to have these interstitial lamellae to fill in those gaps. And this is kind of shown right here. So you can see those, the circumferential lamellae right here. going around each one of these little ASEAN systems. 
You can see the interstitial lamellae, and then you can see these external and internal circumfer circumferential, easy for me to say, uh, lamellae kind of holding all that together on the inside and the outside. Sorry, these ones were concentric lamellae. I forgot to I said the wrong term here. These ones are concentric lamellae. But again, that gives you that overall idea of the microscopic structure of bone. Uh, and we will take some look at some, I'll do some videos with the slides as well so you can see some of this on an actual tissue slide. Spongy bone, because it is much thinner, it does not have these osseon systems. We don't have to do these foramens in this very regular network to supply nutrients to that because it's not nearly as thick. The trabeculae are much thinner, and because of that, it's really just going to be kind of a regular shaped lamellae with the osseocytes and canaliculi connecting to one another. So you're going to have canaliculi going to these different osseocytes here, but you're not, and you can see some lamellae right here, but you're not going to have this regular system around a canal of any sort. And again, because it's much thicker, we can provide those nutrients from outside those trabeculae into that spongy bone area. And again, those trabeculae are those kind of all those little branchy, spongy bone pieces that kind of going together with bone marrow filling in between there. Uh, again, because they are doing all these different angles and kind of making a lot of little triangles and shapes like that, if you think about support structures of a bridge, for example, that type of structure, those triangular structures are in crisscrossing kind of beams are very good at supporting weight and providing resistance to different stresses. And that's when you think about the trabeculae of the bone, these are actually like, for example, the femur, the head is off to the side like this. It is transferring all the stresses of supporting that weight here down equally to both sides of that bone. So those trabeculae help distribute weight and stress throughout the bone so it can be supported well. Uh, and again, you have osteocytes in between these parallel lamellae in there and canaliculae canaliculi going in between each of those osteocytes. So you can kind of see the trabeculae right there, like I said, a lot of triangular, if you think about bridge girders and stuff like that, a lot of support structure here. So that gives us a good idea about the actual structure of bone. Again, we'll pick up next time, talk a little bit more about how bone is formed, uh, how we form the skeleton, some of the different parts of the skeleton. So I will see you next time.